<laughs> In the bottom right is the red Protoss. It is strange. In the top left, as the blue Protoss, it is Hellraiser. Okay, so PvP, both those up-and-coming Protosses, the ones that don't quite, you know, immediately come to mind when you think of European Protosses, but definitely could in the future. Hellraiser, perhaps, more along the lines of uh, cheesy all any when you think about them, strange. So, like, capable of it, but it's not nearly as much, um, that's at least what I think, right? And it's kind of being shown here. <laughs> I mean, PvP is a... It's, it's a beast, right? It's like TVT. Even if you're not necessarily the most aggressive person, in every matchup in TVT, you gotta have your own one base builds. Your your factory expands with the triple hell and triple reaper stuff. In PvP, you're gonna have your proxy builds. You're gonna have your slight aggression with slow warp ins. You're going to have your proxy stargates. And in this case, you're gonna have your, oh, am I doing something? Am I being aggressive? Because you're showing that maybe that second pylon isn't, uh, isn't in the base, but you're actually not doing anything. Now in this case, the uh, third pylon, right, is put down at a pretty normal time. Yeah, okay, it's actually timed up with, with Strange. Yeah, so Strange initially wonders what's going on with the proxy pylon. Because he saw a lack of a second one. But it's actually nothing. It's just there. And it seems to be common nowadays. Stargate first. These stalkers would love to have found the adepts a little bit sooner, but now, as they don't get any shots off on them, they are just going to continue forward here and let the shield battery take care of that. And these two stalkers also, if uh, really need be, could help out back at home. So, eh, adepts aren't going to do very much, but these stalkers, arguably, are not going to do very much either, but they're going to do more than the adepts because they're going to be let inside the base. So while these stalkers have to get two shots on probes to actually kill them, it is more than what Hellraiser's Adepts opened up with. Now, what doesn't happen if you go up with the Stalkers... Oh, no, actually, no. Never mind, they did. Sometimes you don't see what's what the tech is, right? With the Adepts, with the Shade Through, they usually get a pretty... They usually get really far in there and they see what's going on. If the Stalker had been put here, well, the Stalkers would have seen it, right? But they saw it. Strange could get a Shield Battery in the main base, but currently not going for it. He actually went for a Twilight Council. Third gateway is about halfway done, and that proxy pylon that was used to potentially solve a Nexus, right, in a different type of game, is being used to go ahead and just do slow warp-ins. So, there is going to be some aggression on that low ground, eventually into some Blink Stalker, real aggression. But Strange, not actually having a lot of Oracle defense, could have lost a decent number of probes. Hellraiser doesn't go into it. And now Hellraiser is so, like, slightly mistimed that the Stalker's gonna be back here to defense. Easy peasy. And I worked, I worked out quite well for Strange. Did his aggression really add up to very much? No, but he didn't lose the Stalkers, didn't lose probes to the Oracle, so... More power to him, as far as I can see, right? And now his pylon does block out the Nexus for a little while longer while he gets his own. He'll have Blink to control the map and potentially be aggressive with another proxy pylon coming down here. And Hellraiser, um, still not finding anything to do with that Oracle. Despite there not being a shield battery, now a second Stalker comes in, so it will be, um, dealt with without too many losses. It still should be some probe losses if he wants to do this, if he actually wants to go for it, but doesn't want to lose the Oracle, just goes for the Revelation Tag instead. Doesn't actually get that much, I guess, but... Now uh, the Oracle's still alive to scout. When it has a scout of the lack of army, this Berserker now sees the army on the front line. Does it see the pylon as well? No. So this is already scary, and then imagine more stalkers coming in. In fact, he sees one warp in. These stalkers already went forward to grab the stalker that they did, so... 
took a little while to blink away, and that Immortal did get a lot of shots off, but the shield was popped in the last second, so nice micro there from Strange, and now he's gonna go ahead and pounce on top of it and take it out and just barely loses these two stalkers. Okay, I'm still waiting for the second one to go down. Woo, and now he can blink them back. Oh, this is actually really nice by Strange. Uh, finally loses the second stalker there in the attack. The Oracle tried to help, and it does help a little, and ignores armor with its spell damage. But it's taken down very quickly to this many stalkers. So still trying to help out here. He does whatever he can. However, he's desperate to hold on. He's about to have a second immortal pop out. Does start that plus one uh, attack, but is it really going to be a part of this game? I don't know. The next is going down is already a huge blow because Strange has his. And while he's not producing probes now, there could be probe production in the future. Another immortal goes down, another stalker. The stasis trap does pop on quite a few stalkers. The Oracle, again, doing its best to be helpful here, but that's still so many stalkers left over. That is gonna just be game. Strange doesn't have to worry about going into a macro game here. And that was really, really well executed. The, the micro there for the, the blink attack was quite, quite good. But then I think also on top of that, we had Hellraiser with an unideal opener. Adepts didn't do anything. He lost a couple of probes to begin with, and then the Oracle did really nothing. Good stuff, though. I was quite impressed with Strange. Strange's micro. I mean, it's it's one of those things that looks really good because you're already in, like, this decent position, right? But I think it was also just good. Imagine being cruel enough to poke the hornet's nest of Star Wars nerds. Yeah. At a certain point, when it comes to any fandom, right? Because we're also thinking about doing some D&D, &D, and that's like, I feel like you can, like, not incidentally, like, you can accidentally, like, not even think about the community there, because you should be doing your own D&D &D thing. Like, who cares what, what you're doing, because you're having fun with your friends, but people care. All right, D&D &D fans can be weird as shit. But it's kind of the same thing at some point. You know, you bring up Star Wars because you have like a shared interest and the other guy likes it a lot more. You bring up D&D because &D you have a shared interest and the other guy likes it a lot more. You just say, you know what? You're right, there's a lot of flaws, but I don't mind them. I still find it an enjoyable thing to do, thing to watch. And uh, all the other trilogies had their own problems and I still found all of those enjoyable In fact. The first movie of the f of the prequel trilogy is actually my favorite movie, guys. Yep, I said it. Anyways, in the top left was the Red Protoss. It is strange. The well-executed blink attack. In the bottom right is the Blue Protoss. It is Hellraiser. One of the pickups for the fine team that is Clash. It's strange representing Blazer, another um, pretty new team. Ah, talking about Warcrafts, we watch the uh, typical PvP unfold. Well, actually, Strange doesn't go for a wall, so that is notable. Let's see how that works out. I do want to buy the Warcraft stuff from uh, GOG that was released a little while back, and I want to play it, but then I also think about playing it and how it's like this super, super, super old game. And I'm like, oof. Oof, is it really going to be worth it? I don't know. I don't know. But I imagine you guys would enjoy it being streamed, and it's still under the RTS umbrella, and it's still a story that I've always wanted to, to go through as someone who, you know, did play a lot of Warcraft 3, and then a lot of World of Warcraft. There's a lot of story that I just wasn't actually playing through that older people, let's be real, just like the older people would have done. Because my generation, my age, of people. I'm gonna be 28 soon. 
Um, Warcraft 3 was probably... A lot of people, like, you know, around that time, they were getting PC games. They were <clears throat> finding Battle.net, right? They actually could remember games as well, I guess. <laughs> I don't even know when Warcraft 2 came out. If I did play it, I would have been really, really young. I wouldn't even remember it. Anyway, so Strange opening up with the Strange wall off, or lack thereof. Uh, kind of inviting the Adepts, but this is kind of weird, right? Like, even though the Adepts can just cause a laughable endgame, like, I killed five probes, what are you going to do about it? And you just lose PvP from there on out? It also can be a bit of a bait. It, it does invite the adept. So if you stay home, more reserve strategy, which is what Strange did last game anyways. Oh, they didn't open up the century. It was a four soccer opener. Um, you can deal with the adepts. So in a way, you're like once again being like, hey, your adepts, you'll make them, you'll try and use them, but they're still gonna die or not do anything, which is what happened last game. So we'll see if that actually works out. It's like a theoretical thing, right? You're still gonna lose a probe or two because you're gonna take a while to kill that second adept. In fact, you lose four probes. And then, and then the shield battery starts to kick in. I think one was lost down here though too. So like, yeah, you know, technicalities, whatever. But that's something that can be entirely avoided with the wall off. So I'm still always wondering what exactly is causing some of these protoss to uh, invest in the non wall offs. Cause this isn't the first time I've seen it but it is still more rare, so I, you know, no. Protoss experts have to tell me. Uh, now we have a Resident Glaives opener with the Twilight Council, not Blink this time. Resident Glaives, which really as an all-in has come back, or just a style to play has come back in PvP, it feels pretty strongly. Both going for Nexus, Hellraiser going for that standard follow-up with the Robo, the safe follow-up with the Robo, and then a Forge. I would have to see that it's Adepts, and uh, something that you can't really tell. Again, this could be, just be the Blink again. He saw nothing but stalkers, so it kind of all points to it being maybe just the blink and then a robo later on or something like that. You start seeing a lot of adepts warp in, and you can start kind of just like one plus one equals two, right? And there is a warp in of adepts that Hellraiser is barely not going to see with this hallucination. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, Strange doing a really nice job hiding it, looks like. Nah, actually he's not. Eh? Okay, okay, okay. I still don't know if Hellraiser can read into that. Like, it's still not a lot of adepts, even though we saw that there was three of them. If he had seen the proxy, Gateway, then I think a lot of things become clearer. And again, more adept warp-ins. But this isn't even, like, really that much of an adept army. This isn't, like, 16 adepts coming forward here going for the attack. This is actually just a little, you know, sprinkling of adepts right now alongside a lot of force fields and a decent number of stalkers to help out. But here come more and more and more and more adepts. Eventually that gateway will finish to add in an additional warp in plus the fast warp ins. And these adepts don't just help out on the front lines doing damage, soaking damage, whatever. They also, yeah, do exactly that. So no wall off comes down. Uh, actually a little bit awkward, these two adepts over here, kind of freebies. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be damage in the main base. It's gonna take away from the front defense of Hellraiser. So maybe these units can get something done, but he did figure out what was going on. Actually, continuing to even get hallucinations in there and adepts, I believe, went back in there. But even though he figured out what was going on, there was going to be an attack. Probably thinking back to that last game, right, of how there was a stalker attack. Doesn't stop him from getting 14 probes killed. And it still might not stop the actual win here, the actual victory of the main attack. Because while four shield batteries looks damn good and a cannon, um, there still isn't a lot of army on the front lines. And that seems to be it's going to be happening. I mean, tons of force fields come down, so the immortals aren't even helping. The shield batteries, if one in the front was in range, it's already out of juice. These ones in the back are going to have trouble actually reaching what they need to with still more force fields coming down. I mean, the Senjis themselves do not add a lot of damage here, so that's kind of like sometimes what's happening is that the, the, the stalkers are pushed forward, the immortals push forward, but they're not dying that quickly, especially because the warp prism is helping the micro. Um, but their force fields are, they, they can't be underestimated, especially in the hands of a pro, but they are almost entirely gone. Hellraiser is going to go ahead and just wall this off, realizing that the adepts could once again shade through, and he can't even spare the army to go follow them, 
and he definitely can't spare the loss of probe should they get into the main base again but is this really going to be enough? The Immortal juggling is going to be really, really helpful here. Again, not a lot of, like, straight-up DPS in this army of Strange. As all the Stalkers are gone, many of the Adepts are dying, the Sentries are getting out of juice for the most part, and some of them are starting to die too, yet you still have four Immortals to actually push through with the Micro? I don't think it's going to happen. Strange might have gotten a ton of probes killed, but as time has gone on, Hellraiser has gotten back up to an even worker count and then some as he's been continuing to produce probes. The defense seems like it's going to be good enough here, and, you know, after all of a sudden done, Adepts do start to really... What's the word? They, they start to just drop off in terms of how useful they are, eventually having more mortals, eventually, you know, Archons, maybe even Charge Lots, if the game really went that far, uh, would be better, but not quite there yet. We're not done yet with the attack. Now we are into that insane number of Adepts, the 16 or whatever Adepts, that can actually jump on top of the army and um, get an insane punch or two right before they start losing their lives. But it's six Immortals now. It's six Immortals for 16 Adepts and six Centuries which, by the way, have gained energy again, so Force Fields, perhaps Guardian Shield, will be available. There's the Guardian Shield, the Force Fields, okay, not too many of them. Most of the army is in range of the Shield Batteries. War Prism again here to help out with the Micro is doing a beautiful job, and the Adepts do not get through to that main base. Is Hellraiser once again going to hold? It kind of feels that way. Plus one finish, by the way, a long time ago, so that has been in Hellraiser's pocket for every single one of these battles, it feels, or certainly for a lot of it. But the Immortal count just got super insane, and while they don't do... Um, like an extreme amount of damage to the Adepts, like they would against Stalkers, for instance, they still pack a punch. The Adepts do shade through, however, and are going to get some probes. It's going to put a laser back down to even with Strange. But it also comes down to the army type. How good is your army to your opponent? Technically, Hellraiser should have that advantage. Strange would have to do that really awkward thing with Adepts where you trade out economy for army and then hope that it eventually wins you the game. That's very, like, 2016 Legacy of the Void, right? Because um, right now, if he is attacked, the Adepts would not hold up. But if he forces a base trade or, you know, continues to delay this attack and then also hits the economy very hard, then maybe there's a hold. But he's definitely not thinking about holding back in his base. There's no shield batteries. There's no warpings over here. He's still warping in from the proxy gateway, which now Hellraiser uh, has found and eventually could take out if Strange would give up this position. Strange trying to get what he can here. Warp prism a little... Actually, where is it? I mean, definitely out of position. Oh, okay. It's going for some harassment with two immortals. Which will, yeah, that'll bring Strange's economy down way down there. He was not on a great one to begin with, but the War Prism not here to help out means that these Immortals have been popped on their shields and are, are dying here. These are Chargeless Zealots, by the way, but a lot of this has been a tight uh, spot. You know, these Zealots are probably going to get a lot of swipes in because there's not a lot of room to maneuver for Hellraiser's army. The Adepts also once again got into the main base and killed at least a few Adepts, but are actually being tied up with the Stalkers. So not as much economic damage as Strange was hoping for. In his main attack, while well, he does finally take out some of these Immortals, he still has two more Immortals to deal with from that War Prism that's not being recalled. Actually, just the two Immortals because the War Prism died. But that War Prism killed the Nexus. So it's still going to be Hellraiser's hold. And he's going to tie up this series one to one. But damn if that wasn't close. Damn if that wasn't a good game. That's pretty neat. was pretty neat. If he didn't have as many shield batteries, then it's a possibility that that, that immortal count never goes up to that four or five, six count, right? That he loses one, another one, another one, and then finally when 16 adepts jump on top of his immortals, there's like two or three of them, which is a pretty drastic difference. And there is a chance that he continues to let the adepts into the main base, which that one time was pretty brutal, using 15 probes like that, but it could have happened three or four more times if he wasn't on point about it, just kind of said, you know what? I'm just gonna wall off, F this. I like Strange's plan though. Strange also was a, with a very technical army, um, you know, showing the the Twilight Council being revealed was going to happen. They both had sentries for Lucent Phoenix. But, you know, the change-up of the uh, direct stalker attack with the shield batteries obviously would have been perfect, and the Moodles would have obviously been perfect. To change it up to, like, an adept attack, where the adepts do change the way you have to defend. You have to go to the main base occasionally, and you have to 
you don't have like a, um, what's what's the word? Like you don't you can't maneuver as well against adepts because if they want to jump on top of you, there's not much you can do about it. Um, really changes how that fight happens, and then the force fields on top of that, right? Great. Technical army. They probably try to take advantage of the last game, playing into that best of three mentality. Um, and it almost worked. Almost. I think some other Protoss players perhaps uh, wouldn't have defended so well because they wouldn't have gotten a War Prism. You know, they would have thought just like spam, 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 stalkers or something like that. But that War Prism helped out a ton. What's to argue about D&D, &D, old and new systems? Oh, so much more than that. Making sure I'm not missing an invite. Okay, yeah, so... Yeah, there's the arguments over which version is better. And it's not just, like, old D&D and new D&D, like, 3.5 and 5, whatever. Um, but also, um, you know, there's you know, people pointing out Pathfinder and D&D. There's also a ton of other RPGs that are D&D-like, and are, if they're good or not, if they're worth playing. Um, and then you have people who are so much more hardcore about the rules than others. Some people really want to have restrictions, and they want to play as if they're up against a challenge that they have to fe defeat. Other people want a challenge, but really they just want to have, like, a story with friends. And you have the argument over how you're supposed to DM. And then we even had a slight argument with, uh, when I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn about how, like, there should be more interaction with, you know, people being able to kind of play around with being DM, not just one DM and four followers, but instead of having someone be this type of dm and that type of dm and then you all kind of make a story together and it's not just one person making everyone else like there's so many things about DD &D that can be changed up which is great but also means that you get people who are like that's the best way to play DD, &D, and you are doing it wrong and like anything anything not even flipping competitive because DD is not competitive is it not really not usually anything you get people that just are such like looking like rule i don't even know rule elitists maybe that's the word i'm looking for where they're just like what you don't play with like the feet you don't like see how many feet it is away and you don't like take a tape measure out and like make sure to do the math and shit like that's stupid what you let that guy get away with a roll on dexterity instead of instead of whatever like i don't fucking know right but that happens like, it's really annoying. So, DD can be scary if you're gonna do it publicly, like stream it or, or go to a new group. Trying to figure out, you know, exactly how, how they play it can be very different. Yeah. Anyways, in the top left is the Red Protoss. It is strange. In the bottom right is the Blue Protoss. It is Hellraiser. Thank you, I like money, for the Twitch Prime sub. Yes. I like money as well. All right, so double stalker opener from both parties, both also going for the actual wall offs here. Um, Strange opening up strangely last game by putting his gateways back over here. 
Dade opened himself up to, what was it, like four probe kills? And then kind of like turned it around and made his own adepts and <laughs> killed his opponent. Um, so yeah, this time into a Stargate for Strange. That's why they counsel how Razor going with the good old Robo and is looking for that Nexus, which he's able to grab. Wants to hide that information as long as possible, but unfortunately did not. Like, just that <laughs> mistiming by a little bit. So the probe did see the Nexus, and Strange has already set up a proxy pylon, which I guess he'll be using. So Stalker is to the front, Oracle in the back. Can be a nasty combo, even if you're not, like, you know, with a third gateway, or maybe you're trying to expand behind it or something, and still be pretty nasty. So Hellraiser won't know exactly what's going on yet. This Lucinated Phoenix is going to be coming soon, but not quite yet. Soon, as in now, there we go. So the Hussein Phoenix is gonna go over the Stalkers with a nice find, but it needs to make sure it doesn't die to the Stalkers. Okay, yeah, exactly. Microing it, nice. It wants to see if it's a Stargate. If it's an Oracle, usually is the very specific thing, like the most immediate uh, threats. If you don't have a shield battery, if you don't have units in your main, right? Saying the best way to play D&D is like saying is the best way to enjoy a conversation with friends. That's exactly what it is. All right, so the Stalkers, little out of position. Maybe if they were on the high ground, they would have gotten a bit of defense advantage, but that's where the Phoenix would have played in. There would have been no high ground advantage. So they are just deciding to give up that Nexus, which is probably the right call, right? Lucinate Phoenix from Hellraiser saw that there was no Nexus and uh, if you give up your own Nexus, maybe it's not so bad, but deciding that he actually might be able to hold it actually doesn't get the last shot. It is 20, 74 health? No, it's 24 health. I keep forgetting which one's the energy, which one's the health. Uh, that's damn close. Hellraiser now does have the high ground here, so force field come into play. So again, not the high ground vision. The answer providing that, also a little bit of a uh, Crowd control, but the force fields making sure the zealots don't get any swipes off and even a couple stalkers derping around each other. Hellraiser now also has a war prism. That micro was so critical, so key in that last game. It's going to be very helpful again here. And unfortunately, with strange army type, he doesn't have blink, he doesn't have adepts. There's no way he's going to be able to sack uh, units on top of this nexus to get the snipe and then get out with any reasonable unit count left over. If he tries, he will lose so many units here. Um, so he's uh, in a bit of a bind. Didn't get the Nexus, doesn't have his own. Has had to go for Void Ray and continuing to warp in with the slow warp in with the proxy pylon. Kind of feels like he is in a bad position. Hellraiser really, I really thought he was giving up that Nexus entirely. I guess he did, but then realized like, wait, no, if I just get two more warp ins here, I'll be fine. And he was right. I mean, it's two Immortals and a Warp Prism. Doesn't get much better than that. And he's also still going to have a Guardian Shield with a Sentry, so really nice stuff. Or two Force Fields, which are still going to be super, 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 super good. So, Strange just uh, doubles down here. The Voidery was already quite a big commitment, very expensive unit. Uh, but then also going for the proxy gateway. The problem is, is that Hellraiser has the intel. Still kind of sees the army warping in occasionally. Yeah, you can just poke forward to see that it's still there and then leave. And this observer is going to see the lack of Nexus. So really all the signs point to continue to defend, which he already was, was doing. It wasn't uh, some silly like, oh, I'll just build my third Nexus, right? But it's arguable that you could take this a little too lightly. Thought, you know, too confidently he could defend against this, and maybe he skips the shield batteries, and then maybe it, it crashes down from there. That's also not going to be the case. Since he knows how banned committed this is, he is going to add the shield batteries, and it's hard to see how exactly Strange is going to make this work, but he's going to try. Now with two Void Rays overcharged, they are going to do wonders against the Stalkers and against that War Prism. It will go down very, very quickly to two Void Rays if it's in the wrong place at the wrong time, even with the shield batteries. And that could uh, be the loss of Micro, could also be the loss of two immortals if it really, really goes poorly. So, we'll pay attention to that. Uh, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, decides not to go forth it. Whew. Those two probes almost, uh, almost ruined that for him. Okay. All right. A robo as well? I guess thinking about an, uh, a war prism to hop up to the main base with? Not a bad idea. 
but time is on the defender's side in in general but also definitely because the second nexus is alive and working i don't know about going down the ramp though and i guess that's exactly what strange is hoping for the overcharge does do wonders against the stalkers but there's where the war prism comes into play saving every single unit so far okay misses that one sentry The Void Rays do end up living through that, right? Because they do get very slow when they're overcharged. Maybe they could be sniped. Doesn't happen. No Warpism from this. It wasn't immortal. There are a lot of Stalkers, so either one would have been a good call. Oh, there goes the Warpism! Oh, exactly like I was talking about. But it was empty at the very least, and that is immediately re rebuilt. I don't know why I said that so weird. <laughs> oh, a Disruptor. Oh, yeah. Okay, Robotics Bay over in the top right is a good call. You already you already have Hellraiser in an awkward position, right? Every time he's tried to move down the ramp, it's gone kind of poorly for him. So you add a Disruptor in there on the choke, and that's going to go really, really well. But Hellraiser actually gets down the choke, now going up a, a broader one. But this could still be a great shot for the Disruptor. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, he's looking for the last he hits. He's going to find a decent amount of units, not the real expensive ones, though. Was that enough? This Phoenix is real, and it's taken on the War Prism. The Stalkers don't really have the chance to go back and kill that Phoenix, because they're super busy actually helping the main army fight, and Hellraiser might have just been too overconfident here. His Immortals are going to start going down if he's not careful, because that War Prism is actually so low, but it's not being targeted either. And it is helping again a ton, but the Disruptor gets another shot off. Barely. Oh, no, this might be it. The two Warders still aren't taken out, and Hellraiser doesn't have a ton of production. Oh, it's on four gateways, actually, but you need to rebuild those stalkers ASAP. The, go the shield batteries are still helpful, but look at this. The oh, my God. The immortal plus voidery combination there just made sure that the warpings died, like, instantly. Probes are being pulled, but the void is starting to go down here. Maybe that's where things turn around. The immortal also surprisingly weak against the probes around without its shield. There it's a shield. The next void goes down. Two disruptors can't handle an army by themselves, and Hellraiser still has a lot of probes to work with. That immortal goes down. The probes! The probes! Are they gonna do it? Okay, they're actually really failing hard against a stalker and adept, and three more adepts come in here. Hellraiser down to 24 workers to 23, but two Nexus, two shield batteries still alive. A cannon even could help out. Charge is finished up here. The zealots actually get destroyed though by the disruptors, which is a kind of, can be a hard thing to do. But one zealot, one stalker. Still more warpings to happen. Hellraiser had a bit of a bank. I think he had temporarily stalled out his production when he was doing the micro of the main attack, and it's starting to actually help him here because he has he has the money, he just needs to wait for the production. He also has good units, just needs to get them in a big enough number, and that might just be happening right here. The charge, not just adding the speed that's up on top of the units, but also that direct damage. And it's working out so damn well. The Zupters doesn't even get the last shot off. The Zealot to the champion. The Adepts aren't going to be enough. And Strange does not have that same bank. He didn't have that same economy to really push through here. Despite having the production. Despite having technology. GG. Damn. Oh, Hellraiser.